What's going on guys, Chichaco here. Wanted to go ahead and show you a new indicator that we have. It's been out for a little bit, but wanted to go over it in a video for everybody. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I have Borf Switch B on the chart. I'm just gonna leave that there because we're gonna reference it a couple times. Um, I'm going to the CFB Range Trader non-TPSL. All right, so this is one that's just gonna, it's not gonna have like off exchange TPSL. This is gonna be where you want everything on exchange. Just depends on my use case of where I'm using it. It asked me to select the bottom of the buy zone and the top. I think I did that backwards. We'll find out in just a second. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the top and the bottom of the sell zone here. All right. And these would be ranges that I would be currently looking for uh, a trade to happen based on confirmations that I'm going to set up inside of this indicator. So let me go ahead and show you uh, what I want to do is I would like to go ahead and choose ranges that I was looking to trade and never did. Um, so you can get your, you know, your ranges, however you do, if you're looking at, at smart money uh, concepts, or if you're looking at J levels or, you know, your own TA, if you're looking at a specific area, um, you know, you're looking for single print, whatever, whatever the reason is you're looking in your range, you have your range, you can just type it in here and then we can start adding multiple time frame confirmations to this. Let's see. Here we are. Much better. There we go. That looks good. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is go through this. Now, this is how you turn off the buy and sell zones. I just turn off the buy zone, it'll load, it goes away. So that means it won't activate, okay? Uh, maybe I'm not ready for this range. It's a range I want, but I could just wait for it, whatever. Um, enable it. <clears throat> so here is the div reader. So the div reader is where kind of this Borf switch B comes in a little bit. Um, we are looking for um, divergences. Divergences for price and divergences for the uh, momentum, okay? So that's what this range is going to hunt for. All right. And then these are the settings for it. So right now it's looking 50 bars back. There's a, a max of negative 10 and a min of negative 10. So what that means is as this is coming up, if it's reading a div per se, because it's kind of reading some right in here, as this is coming up, once it hits plus negative 10 and starts moving into the plus zone, it cancels the, the, the div, right? Because if we're coming up into here, I don't want to start taking a long trade. All right. So this is all adjustable. Um, so you can adjust this to whatever you like. Some people like this a little tighter. They want to take a more uh, pronounced um, div. And then also the min difference is going to be the slope. Okay. So you can control the slope. Say this is zero. This is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, you, you can control how much your slope is. All right. So those are some of the basic options. Uh, most of the time, actually, I leave them default. This is something that I back tested, but you know, please use. Some people have found better settings that works for them in their trade style. So here's some standard wave trend uh, momentum. So this would be if you're looking to change how the wave trends actually uh, print and work, then you can do that here. Um, overbought and oversold. Okay, a lot of us know our overbought and oversold signs uh, or ranges. So if we're above 60, then we're overbought. If we're, you know, um, below, then we're oversold. And so here we go. And um, here's the money flow. So this is standard money flow settings with like a custom um, multiple, uh, multi time frame area multiplier. Okay. Um, so this is something that was uh, designed by a CFB in our team. And then here we go. So those are kind of the three confirmations that are built in. So we have wave trends, we have the overbought oversold, which the wave trend is divergences. So momentum divergences, we have overbought oversold and money flow. All right. So certain things that we want uh, to be looking at as we enter our range. So one of them is a uh, current time frame. So how this indicator works on your lowest time frame that you're looking at, you want that to be the current time frame. Trading view has limitations. So make sure that if you're looking at the one minute money flow, 
make sure that your current time frame that you are setting this indicator up on the one minute when you make alerts for it. Okay. Then you're going to go to a higher time frame. That's why this is an H up here. Okay. It's really important. So go to a higher time frame and then go to a higher time frame. Okay. Don't go one hour, 12 minute, you know, 12 hour. That's not going to work. Okay. The way trading, there, there's a lot of limitations in trading view. This indicator works specifically lowest time frame, second uh, highest time frame, and then the actual highest time frame. Okay. So I got this set on the 12, uh, one hour, and four hour. All right. So what I'm going to look for, um, let me see. So usually, uh, I'm not worried about that. Probably just looking for divergences. And I am strange. I like the three hour. Not everybody does. <clears throat> so there you go. That's kind of a guess. I would play with it, look at your settings, and see what works best for you. Um, but this is what I'm going to set mine up as um, for this specific kind of trade. If this was a, you know, like more of a swing trade. If you're looking for a scalp trade, you know, different things like that. So it just depends. Um, so for example, what I like about this indicator is you can look and it'll actually show you that you probably would have lost on this long right here. So it would have started into your favor and then it wouldn't have worked out so good. Okay. So that's one. Um, so let's go ahead and just keep looking a little bit. Um, I was looking at these ranges for quite a while. I just ended up being too busy. So here's a short, right? So we come up and then once it triggers, it only triggers once. So once this fires, that's it. That's all you're going to get unless you put the alert on like multiple alerts, which I don't recommend. So we would have gotten in this short here. Um, looks like you could have held that for a while. Okay, here's another one. We came up, you would have entered, and then it would have came down. Probably would have gotten stopped out in profit here. Um, what I like is if I felt like I was, you know, potentially going to come back up to the range and another rejection, I could have just turned the indicator back on. All right. Now let's just see if there's a couple more. We're getting a little far back. So here's some kind of, you know, consolidation zones where you get into. Um, you either would have taken profit on this peak or would have gotten stopped out on these down here. So I think that's about it um here's a couple more actually so you would have entered along here that would have been nice um so basically that's just how the indicator works um, what we have here is you see my selected time frames that i have my 12 minute my 60 and my one hour now as it's currently standing <clears throat> it will tell me what the market conditions are right so I can see the min diff is good. The divergences on the 12 minute are there, but we're neutral here. Um, and it's also disabled on here. And then the wave trend I have disabled, disabled, but the wave trend is at this number on the wave trend. Okay. And then the money flow um, is good here. Um, so it's showing that it's good, but it's disabled, disabled. So it just kind of shows you where you're at. If you wanted to see, you know, like what's currently going on, it also gives you current price and stuff. So um, just a helpful little chart. And um, yeah, so that's how you use this one. Um, we do have a different one uh, where you, we have TPSL, but this is the non TPSL version. So let's go ahead and just say we wanted to add an alert on this. Um, I can come in here and just add my alert. So I can simply pick buy signal or the sell signal. Now from here, I can go to my CFB portal. I can build my script that talks to my bot. It might um, take profits, all my stop losses and everything. And I can have all that information. I drop it right in here. I give the alert a name and I go ahead and I can just hit create alert. And boom, there you go. Um, we have another video on how to set up actual alerts with webhooks and everything. Um, but yeah, just wanted to kind of give you guys an introduction uh, to this indicator. And I hope this video was helpful. Thank you guys.